Welcome, knowledge seekers, to this hallowed hearth and home. You know, the kitchen is the heart of the home. It is the place where memories are made, bonds are built, maybe the occasional argument here and there, discussion, but it is where dreams are discussed, bonds, memories. There are so many things that happen in this one, maybe two rooms if you have a dining room. You know, in this room in the house. And it is the essential heartbeat of the home across many cultures. Especially, though, in Italian cultures. And I can honestly say that this is something that is very near and dear to me today's video. Because I don't know about you, but I grew up in an Italian house. And the kitchen is where everybody landed. You know, whether it was coming home from school or if... You know, somebody came over, if grandma or one of my uncles came over, my dad's uh, employees came in, if it was someone looking, you know, came for, I don't know, a sales discussion, like, you know, like the vendors that come for like windows and roofs and kitchen remodels and stuff. But it was, you know, where you sat and where you made memories. Some of my best and fondest memories are of cooking and baking with my mother and my grandmother. Um, and then, you know, it's also a place of chaos because it's where everybody is trying to grab things, get out the door. You know, maybe you have dogs and cats or pets that are running around. They need to be fed. They want to be walked. They have a place in the kitchen. They're just looking to get food. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a happy chaos. It's a frantic chaos if it's a holiday. But, you know, it's, it is what it is, and it is the place that you go and you sit and you talk. And it would be whether it was our home, grandma's house, my uncles, great aunts or great uncles. Didn't matter where you went. You always ended up at the kitchen table or the dining room table, depending on how the house is set up. You know, if, if you had an eat-in kitchen, then you'd be at the kitchen table. If, you know, the kitchen was too small, then you'd be at the dining room. And that's just how it was. There was always something on hand, you know, that was homemade or store bought. That you know, the food was plentiful, was always available, always. Um, but yeah, so today's video and today's material comes from the book Italian Folk Magic, Ruse Kitchen Witchery, by Mary Grace Farhoon, and I'm going to do a book review on this for the next video in two weeks and here is how she discusses how to cleanse your house through the kitchen and it's a great idea it is very simple it's wonderful and it can be done at any time so the way she explains it is you go into your kitchen and you empty all of your cabinets so this is really you you can do this at any time the way it's framed is it almost sounds like it would be something you would do if you were just moving into a new apartment or a new house you remodeled but I can also remember you know once a year my mother doing a deep deep clean pulling everything out of the cabinets washing the cabinets uh going through stuff, reorganizing, and that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to stand in your kitchen and you're going to empty all the cabinets. You're going to either pack it up into boxes or you're going to put it in another room. And what you're going to do is you're going to remove everything that does not belong in the kitchen. I am very sorry <laughs> if you have children or spouses that have dropped things into the kitchen. Like I know it is a constant battle between my mom and dad because he's got two drawers in the kitchen and she wants them back. And it is a push-pull thing. Has been ever since I was a child. There was always a corner that was dad's corner and whether it was tools or, you know, a hat, gloves, Oh God, uh, whatever you could think of, pieces, stray pieces of wire or wood or pipe would just end up in a corner. Flashlights, batteries, it would just land in the specific corner in the kitchen. 
and my mother would just look at it <laughs> and plot. <laughs> Never got anywhere because it would get moved and then it would come back. <laughs> so, yeah. So good luck to you in this phase of trying to, you know, get everything out of the kitchen that doesn't belong in the kitchen. Because <laughs> that is the first phase. The other thing is to go through everything. Whether you do this in this instance where you're packing everything up or at a later stage, which we're going to get to. Once your cabinets are empty, you go through and you do a deep clean. You wash your cabinets, the, the tile, the backsplash, the walls, everything. Everything in the kitchen gets cleaned and scrubbed. She says if you want to paint your kitchen, now's a good time to paint it. I, I don't think you're going to want to do that every year, but you know, if you, you're like, hey, you know what? Kitchen needs a refresh. Really, really hate that paint color. Now's a good time to do it when you've got everything out and whatnot. My, and know that this is going to take, this is going to be one of the longer stages. So this is going to take you probably a good couple days just to do. But you want to empty and scrub your kitchen. And the reason being is that all of the energy, because at least in this theory or this folk remedy, is that all the energy centers from the kitchen. All the energy flows out from the kitchen. I will add on a personal note, if you have a dining room, so you don't have an eat-in kitchen, or even if you do, granted, you know, we've been through Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and I believe by the time this video comes out, we will be past Valentine's Day. Now, that's not including if you've had any other events, birthdays or celebrations or family dinners. If you've noticed that things are kind of off in the house, go through and also clean your dining room and go through your dining room. Because here's the deal. All the energy that's from the kitchen is going to flow through into the, into the eating area because what happens? All of those discussions you were having by the stove or the sink are now going to follow you to the kitchen table. And they're either going to get better or they're going to get worse. So I, w I personally would add on also clean your dining room. Do a deep clean in the dining room. And if, you've, if you haven't eaten in the kitchen but you still notice things are a little off, do that too. Just add that in. I know it's going to add extra time. But in the end it's all worthwhile because you want the energy of your home to be warm and inviting and upbeat you want to get rid of all of the stagnant energy and that's one of the ways you can do it is just you know do that really deep deep clean so one of the things that makes the kitchen so important and one of the reasons why it is the heart of the home is that you have all four elements represented in the kitchen and she goes on to say you have the stove is fire um, you have wood in wooden utensils, the cabinets, baskets, uh, if you have clay bowls or canisters or stoneware, you have cast iron, pot, maybe you have cast iron pots and pans, uh, water is obviously going to be your faucet, and then air, what's air? Air is the refrigerator, the range hood, the fan, if you have any windows in your kitchen, Obviously, that's a symbol for air. If you want to ask for help during the first stage, go ahead. Do that. So she mentions in your in the first part to go through all the things that you, whether you, do you need to keep this or do you want to give it away? I personally, you can do it here when you're packing stuff up or you can do it in step two, which is you stand in your empty kitchen, close your eyes and just kind of feel the room. Then she says turn on some music. She mentions specifically Italian music. If you're Italian, great. If you aren't, put on something that will connect you to your ancestors because essentially that's what you're doing. You are getting a feel for the kitchen. You're opening up a channel for family to come in, for the ancestors to come in. Um, I don't know about you, but I know even though we're basically a, Ro a Roman Catholic family, we believe that the family's always around. And I have had friends and 
um, mentors come through that have told me the house is just full of family spirits generations upon generations <laughs> also probably too we had stuff going on personally but th there's always family around dogs past pets so just a note on that if you actually do see deceased your deceased pets in the home it's actually a good thing it's a sign that it is a happy home that the animals feel like just come in and visit or pop in or hung around if they've recently passed. So it's it's a really good thing when you see animal spirits uh, or you hear them. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that moment and then connect to the ancestors, play your music, and you're going to set up the kitchen in such a way that it has a cohesive flow to it. So figure out what works best for you. If it's a new home, I kind of feel like you're going to have you're going to be redoing this a couple times because um, you're not sure what the new flow is. So you're probably now that you're going to be cleansing your kitchen, you're going to be reorganizing it. If it's a remodeled kitchen, same deal. It you know it's a new flow. You maybe aren't quite sure what's going to work yet, but regardless set up and set it up on how you think everything's going to move together because basically what you're doing is you're setting it up for the energy to move a certain way and move through the house and a nice kind of even keel even flow um so then once everything's put away take a moment stand center and just feel the energy does it feel good does it feel lighter then that means you've kind of cleared away all that extra energy and that's good she says that kind of light energy that you feel is you creating a bond with the kitchen and the kitchen spirits. To me, it's more of like you're just creating that bond with the, I guess the house or your spirits of your ancestors. Um, cause that to me would be, I, yeah, that to me would be more what it is. Just having baked with my grandmother or making recipes that my father's mother used to make or that he enjoyed as a child, I feel like it invokes those those spirits to come forward and to come with you. And even if it's not stuff that they've ne that they've made, it's just that idea that you're in the kitchen, you are working with your hands, or you're doing things that they would do. And there is that connection across the ether. All right. So now part three is you're going to bless your kitchen, and. Uh, you're going to purify it by tossing a pinch of salt in every corner. You can use, I personally feel you can use any salt. Um, you can use table salt, sea salt, Himalayan salt. Some people prefer either sea salt or Himalayan salt. Use what you have on hand. That's my, my perspective. Especially if you're working in a kitchen, you're probably going to have table salt, maybe kosher salt or sea salt. Use that. And then what you're going to do is to put a pinch in every corner. Then you're going to take a broom and you're going to sweep it up, put it in a pile, put it in the dustpan, and then you're going to toss it out the back door. So the way she says is you sweep from the corners in. So you're going to want a pile and kind of the best approximation of the middle of the room that you can. Um, so you're probably wondering why I was waving around a lemon some cinnamon sticks and some cloves so here comes the really easy part because this is all you need almost roughly all you need for how you're going to do your cleanse so you're going to need a two quart pot this is two and a half I couldn't find the two quart water I don't have a pitcher of water because I didn't want it be my luck I'd knock something over onto my laptop and then you're going to put in see if I can get this puppy open. They have become one with the plastic. Really? Yoo-hoo! Come on. You can do it. I know you can. Alright, cool. There we go. Struggle bussing along here. I didn't, I actually thought they'd come out a lot easier. I was wrong. So you're going to want three cinnamon sticks. I will add that it does not say the size of the cinnamon sticks. So 
use again what you find what you can find or what you have on hand so three cinnamon sticks three whole cloves I have more than three in my hand I really wonder if it matters we'll be exact <laughs> we'll be exact for the first time so three cloves and then I believe you're going to peel the lemon and you're gonna throw it in you're gonna want a teaspoon of sea salt and a lemon cut in half so yeah cut this in half and you're gonna basically fill up fill the pot three quarters of the way with water bring to a boil and then lower the heat and allow to simmer for one to two hours then you're going to use this the smell is supposed to be what cleans the house so it's going to be the smell of it wafting throughout and then what's also really nice is you take you let the mix cool once it's done pour it into a spray bottle and you can now use it to go throughout the house and spray into the corners of every room. And what's really nice about doing this versus maybe other smudging methods, um, say with like Florida water, this doesn't have any alcohol in it. So you it won't stain. Because that is one of the things that uh, Florida water I think has an alcohol base or does have some alcohol in it. So you do have to be careful when you spray it around fabrics and furniture that it might, you know, it might stain. The other really good thing about using a water-based or a liquid smudge is that even though I showed you how to do, you know, the spot cleaning for a certain room using sage, um, if you have someone that is allergic to smoke, is an asthmatic, has breathing problems, whatever, this is a great way to get around that. So using a spray or um, you know something like Florida water, or even rose water, is a wonderful way to cleanse a space and not have smoke lingering in the air. And this is really good for that. And then this will keep, and you can just use it whenever the energy starts to feel off. You just go around and spray. Now she does not say how long it will last. Um, like how long you can keep it for. But I'll leave that up to you. You know, if you feel like after a couple months you want to do this again. If you want to, you know, every six months you maybe want to remake it. Um, every, you know, do it once a year. I don't know if you can freeze it. There's certain things that aren't, that aren't really said. So that's up to you and how comfortable you are. And then you can also put uh, what are basically magical talismans. Here she has a list of Italian ones. If you have ones that are pertinent to you or your culture, you can do that as well. I know in um, Greece, I believe the blue, I think it's Greece and Turkey. And I believe even among the Gypsy or the Romani people, the blue eye is a big one. Um, just do, you know, do what you feel comfortable with. Do what you want. And she's got here that you can use garlic. The whole dried pepperoncini. Also, I've seen them. Um, you can get like braided, like braided things of garlic, or the or like the rings of the pepperoncini to hang around. You can coarse sea salt, a photo or a statue of a favorite saint, or your patron saint, palm leaf, and then you have to pick things that resonate with you. We have my mother's got a statue of Saint Anthony in. The kitchen um that he sits on the window because she has a devotional to saint anthony um did i have a saint in mine i don't remember i don't remember if i had a religious image in my apartment kitchen I don't know if I, I don't think I did. I had pr I had a prayer. I think I had a prayer over the stove or over the the refrigerator like God bless this kitchen kind of thing. I think I had one of those. Um but yeah, I think that's actually what it was. It was like a blessing for the kitchen. So you can have something like that. Uh kitchen witch. Check out our video on kitchen witches. I will link that here for you. 
So there's a lot of different things. Put what you feel resonates best with you. You know, um, the, you know, you, it's your kitchen. Do what you think best. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm trying to take you down memory lane. Um, but <laughs> so yeah, that's all I have for you today. I really hope that you try this. So I will add that I will put in the description the bibliographic information for the book, the page numbers, the recipe. You can also go on ruskitchenwitchery.com, which is Mary Grace's blog, and find more information there as well. So this book is also available through Barnes & Noble and Amazon. If you want to go check it out, if you're not sure if it's something that speaks to you, check out and see if you can interlibrary loan it through your local library. Um, you might have to hopefully see if you can get in. You should be able to see if it's available at different libraries over your, all over the state. Um, I don't know if this is available as an audiobook. I never looked. So I think that's everything. I think that's all the information that I needed. And uh, yeah, until we meet again, my friends. Bye.